Hi everybody, my name is Liz Wentmore and I'm from the Milanix Library and this week we're doing part two. Last week we did almond milk, this week we're making almond pulp cookies with bananas to match your leftovers from the almond milk. So let's get started. We're going to start out with two bananas. So you put two bananas in a bowl and you can use a fork to smash them up or I use a potato smasher. And So you're going to want to get these all smashed up in your bowl. And that was two bananas and they can be either whatever degree the more riper they are the sweeter your cookies will be so you know you want to try to have something that's pretty ripe because your cookies will be just that much more delicious okay so we're going to get that smashed up good okay now our next step is we are going to use a nut butter so you, you can use peanut butter you can use almond butter or you can use cashew butter I happen to use almond butter and we're going to use a half a cup of that so a half a cup of your almond butter is going to go into your bananas Our next ingredient that we're going to add is we're going to add maple syrup. Now, you the recipe, it calls for about a third of a cup, depending on how sweet you like your cookies. I don't like my cookies very sweet, so I only did a quarter cup of pure maple syrup, but that's entirely up to you. So anywhere from a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup of the maple syrup. Okay, and then we're going to add a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt and I use pink Himalayan salt I really like prefer that it's got a really nice flavor to it so we're gonna start with then combining those ingredients I'm just gonna be able to take a little bit just to break up that almond butter but you're gonna want to mix all that together to get it good and combined. And if there's lumps from your bananas, don't worry about that. That just makes your cookies. It's just nice to get banana chunks within your cookies. Okay, so now it's nice and mixed up. Our next ingredient is we're gonna add two tablespoons of coconut flour. So this is really gonna start thickening up this batter as well as a quarter of a cup of ground flaxseed. Now you can grind these yourself or you can buy them pre-ground. These are the pre-ground ones. So you're gonna do a quarter of a cup of those. So now we're going to take and start combining that. It's gonna start getting thick. And here's where you're gonna use your pulp from last week. So I put mine in the freezer and then I defrosted it and you're gonna pack it real tightly to one cup uh, of your pulp. And if you don't have enough from your your one, it, from making your almond milk last week, just freeze it until you get a second batch of almond milk and you have enough. But actually this was from a batch, just one batch. So that should be pretty much enough from last week. So you're gonna add that in. It's gonna make it really nice and fluffy. But it's gonna take you a little bit to combine all this because there's gonna be, you wanna make sure you have it all combined well and that you don't have any lumps. So you're gonna use some arm muscle here. Combine this all together. And it makes like a really like fluffy kind of dough and that's because of the way that we had those almond pulp. It makes it a really nice dough. Okay, so you just about get it all combined. We're gonna set our oven to 350 degrees. Now, the last ingredient that I'm gonna add is chocolate chips, and it is completely optional. You don't need the chocolate chips, it's nice without, but I always think everything tastes a little bit better with chocolate chips. So I add a third of a cup of chocolate chips to my mixture. Okay, so you wanna mix that around real good. 
get those incorporated. Make sure you have no lumps in your batter. Okay, and then you're going to use, I use a, uh, a scooper. It, it just makes it a lot easy, like just to take a, take a, so you get the same amount. So you're basically going to scoop out your cookies onto silicone mat, or you can use parchment paper. Either works. And you're going to scoop out your cookies. Now these cookies do not spread in the oven, so you are going to have to take and flatten them with your hand just to get them a little bit more flattened. This makes quite a few cookies. It probably will make um, probably 15 to 20, depending on what size scoop you use. Okay, so once you get them scooped out, you're just going to take your hand and you're just going to kind of flatten them. And this dough will feel really fluffy. It's going to feel different than cookie dough, but that's okay. It's just a different texture, but it comes out really nice. And it's great not to waste that almond pulp that you used from the almond milk. This way you're using all your ingredients and not having to throw any away. So you're gonna flatten those and then they're gonna go into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes and I'll see you back in 20 minutes. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so your oven, your oven should have been going at 350 for 20 minutes. You're gonna take out your cookies and they should be looking brown around the edges, just like that. You're going to leave these on your, your mat for at least five minutes to cool down because they're very soft cookies and then move them to your cooling rack to cool down. These will last for five days in an airtight container at room temperature. I also wanted to tell you to check out our A to Z database that is World Foods. You can get all sorts of world recipes on that. So go to the New Lenox Library and check out that database. We have some awesome things that you can do. Also, you can learn different languages with mango, so don't forget to do that too. So go to www.newlenoxlibrary.org, and I hope you all have a great Friday.